Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. On this hashtag Transformation Tuesday, we're so excited to welcome Ms. Linda Spellman from MBA to Psychic Medium. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So tell us about that transformation, MBA to Psychic Medium. It, that's what I said. So <laughs> basically, uh, four years ago, I was VP of Marketing for a $3 billion company. I thought everything was going pretty well. One night I went out and I was sexually assaulted. And I went to work the next day because I thought it would just go away. <laughs> Apparently it didn't, despite my best efforts. And I ended up, I had severe post-traumatic stress disorder to a point where I actually had to leave my job, leave my family, leave my home, and go into treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. And I knew at that point that I was never going to be able to go back and do what I did. So that, unfortunately, at that point in my life, my job defined me. That's who I was. It wasn't just what I did. So I was lost and scared, and for the first time in my life, because I'm type A on steroids, I had no idea what I was doing. And I knew at that point, I'm also a Christian, and my faith saved my life at this point. I knew that my purpose was to help people. And I thought, okay, I'm down. I've always tried to be that person, but how am I gonna do that? And then about a week later, while I'm in treatment for mental health disorder, I start seeing people that are not there. I thought, great, I'm legit going crazy. But luckily there was a person who worked at the facility that was metaphysically aware and started validating for me the people I was seeing, the events that I was seeing, and realized that I was speaking to people who had passed away. Wow. That's what I said. Uh, so uh, literally it was like turning a light switch on. I started practicing and now I have people all over the world that I do readings for, or if you happen to be sitting next to me in the nail salon or at the airport, <laughs> um, or in front of me in line. Uh, <laughs> pretty much anywhere. <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much. But it's been such a blessing because I've kind of helped heal myself by helping to heal others. And I still have a long way to go. I still have severe post-traumatic stress disorder, and I deal with that every day. I still could not do what I used to do, but I know I'm not meant to. I named my company Light of the Phoenix because my life did burn down, and my life was ashes. And then I realized that I could be light for other people to let people know that just because you think your life is over, it could just be beginning like mine was. Wow. That's beautiful. When you started having these psychic experiences, were you able to discern between your voice or the voice in your head and mm. somebody else's voice? You know what? That is the greatest question because I tell people, because they ask me, do you hear it? And it's not as if I can hear you talking. It is like a voice inside your head. It's, so if you were to right now think of your favorite song, you're not hearing it outside, it's not audible, but you're hearing it inside. That's kind of the voices. And a lot of people can't discern them. And I even had a hard time at the beginning discerning whether it was a voice that was giving me a message for someone or my own voice. And it's pretty much the first time I've ever really understood that expression in your mind's eye, because that's how I see things. It's not like I see that TV screen. If you remember what your car looks like, Oh. You see that in your head? Yes. But you don't see it in front of you. That's how I see things. It's a much more subtle kind of knowing. Very much. Very wow. much so. Incredible. Did it take a while to lean in and have trust that what oh, you yes. were hearing and seeing? Well, the worst part for me is because, again, I've always been type A. I was a single mom. I got my undergrad and MBA while I was working full time as a single mom. So I've always had to try for everything I've gotten. The worst thing I can do as a psychic medium is to try because then I'm entering the reading. Mm -hmm. The best thing I can do is not try. So when people sure. come and see me, the first thing I say is don't tell me anything. And I also tell them, I, I won't look at you when I'm reading you because I don't want to be influenced by facial expressions. Oh, wow. Because then that's me entering the reading. As a human being, it's very hard to pull yourself away when you see someone's facial expressions. Oh, that was interesting, I should follow that. So I don't, I just don't look. Well, you have, uh, you said uh, that you have a, a Christian mm -hmm. faith base, mm -hmm. and then with the psychic, how is, uh, how have you found, because I know a lot of Christian, mm -hmm. uh, Christianity can be judgmental, how, where mm -hmm. does that line come, and how did you make it right for your own heart before your own maker? Good question. Really, because I know, without a doubt, that I'm not doing this by myself, mm -hmm. and I watch people change. I had probably the most humbling experience of my life a few weeks ago doing something that I didn't know I could do. I had a woman who called in, she was a phone reading, so I called her, uh, her sister, she had two sisters actually there, and I started doing what I do, and I said, my throat really hurts, the front of my neck hurts, and I feel like I'm intubated, and she started crying. She said, that's my mom. Aww. And 
know, I'm used to people being on the other side. And I stopped for a second and I said, is she still alive, but in a coma? And she said, yes. Oh. And I proceeded, I'm sorry, I still get emotional over this. I proceeded to say goodbye from her to her three children. And I said, her time is near. And I got an email from them at 5.30 the next morning that her mom had passed away. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, so I can't do power. that. I can't. Yeah. I mean, I, and I can't take credit for it. I always tell people, if this isn't making sense, just tell me, because you're not going to hurt my feelings. I don't think for a second I'm doing this. Yeah. I, I kind of consider myself like the volume button on a radio, <laughs> where the messages are there. I'm just turning it up so you can hear it. Right. Is that the most challenging part of what you do, having to share relay messages to people that are difficult messages to, to receive? Honestly, um, usually I'm kind of insulated. One of the most challenging things for me lately has been in the last two months, I've had 15 suicide victims come through in readings. So their families have set up a reading with me. And one of the reasons I wanted to share my story is because almost down to a single person, they have all been empaths, meaning they not only have their own feelings, but they feel what you're feeling. Or they feel if they go out to dinner and there's somebody arguing with them at the table next door, they'll go home and they'll feel anxious or angry and they won't know why. And a lot of these are teens. So they have these feelings. They have hormones already, so let's start there. Um, <laughs> it's plenty right there, right? Right, exactly. But then they go home and they have all these feelings they don't understand. And then they reach out to drugs or alcohol to numb the feelings because they can't make them stop. And then they feel ashamed. So then they do more. And ultimately, they get to the point of taking their own life. And there's so many of these sensitive kids that don't know what being an empath is, and they don't know that that's where these feelings are coming from. I want to tell them. I want to share with people who are working with children that this exists. So maybe, maybe even just one person is listening to this that recognizes that in themselves and can say, wait a minute, these are not my feelings. I need to figure out how to set up that boundary. That was the greatest discovery of my life as a teenager, was recognizing that lots of what I was feeling was, yes, my own thoughts, but it was even more so everything and everybody around me that I was also right. feeling. Right. Like once I discovered that there was both power in that and a challenge in that, I think it began to let me go down a different path or could begin to sort of separate the two. Right, right. And it, kids don't know that. Mm -hmm. And their parents don't know that. Well, thank you for sharing that insight and that light with us, Linda. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow you. So my website is lightofthephoenix.com. And my Instagram is light underscore of underscore the underscore phoenix. Mm -hmm. I know. I didn't know I was going to put it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also do messages there, which is basically quotes from spirits that have come through for my clients. And I call them messages from beyond. So they're just inspirational and motivational messages, if you like that sort of thing. Oh, thank, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for having me Stay on. Stay tuned. Back with more on Good Morning Wildland.